Okay, here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is. I hope it's good to be where you are because it is certainly good to be here. My name is Baltimore Fats and this is a special presentation of Mud City. Yeah, all right. So just to start off, I mentioned in the last one that I, I don't get as much opportunity to do the type of rabbit holing that I used to do. Uh, you know, when I started making videos and then, you know, I went on that month long tear there and then it was the holidays, but I do always try to stay on top of, um, certain channels, especially the ones that I put in my channels that do this better than me. I'm always looking for what they're doing. And I saw just the other day that, uh, the channel mud flood, the channel with whom, without whom I would not be here at all today uh did a presentation of, uh, about the gilded mansions and he spent a considerable amount of time on the biltmore estate and you know to steal a turn of phrase from uh my friends in the uk yeah, i was gutted uh it just took the steam right out of me because um my parents live not far from Asheville, and so that's where we spend our christmas uh every year and so I had planned on doing, uh, you know, I had this whole presentation done about the city of Asheville, and I was going to start it off with a nice long run about the Biltmore Estate. And I went to the Biltmore Estate, uh, and then when I saw Mud Flood's video, which uh, I highly recommend if you haven't seen it, uh, you definitely need to watch it. I will uh, put a link for it in, in this video, in the description. He does a much better job than I ever would have done going into the details about the estate itself and you know one of the great features about this gilded age mansion and he does talk about in his video is that there are construction photos lots of them you know and so i was going to go into some of that but he does a fantastic job uh going into some of the features about uh the bill the biltmore estate and you know now i really don't have to do that there are some things you know and i was going to go into the vanderbilts i have some information about the ba vanderbilts pulled up here you know, because I was going to go down that road as well. And, you know, he didn't really touch on it as as much, I think, as he could have. And, and so I'm and there's some things about that Vanderbilt name that I want to touch on briefly that he did not. Um, so he did leave me a little wiggle room in here to do some stuff with the Biltmore Estate that I'm glad for. But definitely check out his video. Um, and so... Here we go, road trip, right? That's that was the whole point. It was going to be a Mud City road trip to Asheville, and we were going to start at the Biltmore Estate, right? And this is what you see. Look, and I want to point out this line of cars ahead of me, right? It was Christmas Eve. Uh, I'm going to say about eleven o'clock in the morning, um, you know, and you know. So here we go. This is what greets you. You have to drive through this little tunnel here. Uh, it's a very it's, um, and this is the visitor center where you have to go. You have to check in at the visitor center. And so this is it driving up, right? Look at this slope and the way this is sort of hidden behind the curvature of this slope here, right? And going up, this is the top, right? This is the bit where you have to go into the visitor center, which is funny because they have it leveled off here. And you can see where the level line, the doorway, it kind of just follows this along both sides. But when you go into the center, you actually have to go down a set of steps to get to the desks and everything. So I think it's, I thought that was kind of curious. So anyway, I go in and this is just showing that. And I say, you know, the, the tour to get up to the estate and get on the grounds and go inside was $85, 85 bucks. You know, so it was Christmas Eve. We just had traveled from Baltimore. I didn't have $85 to throw away on this, the tour of the Vanderbilt estate. But if there's any doubt as to where the Vanderbilts are getting their money today. It's because they charge people $85 to look at their house. This is uh, from the bottom of the hill. This is the front of that visitor center. And you can see, you know, kind of they obscure it here. It kind of gets buried, buried into this hill. Uh, so we turn right around and we're going to leave. I'm, I'm bummed and I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to eat charge me $85 to get in. I'm going to use Google Earth. I don't need any, I don't need to take pictures. Uh, and I was going to do a hit piece on the Vanderbilts in the, and the, uh, Biltmore estate. But then they showed, this is the gift shop on the way out. Look at this. 
hill that just, you know, dumps its mud right onto this building. It is unbelievable. You think they designed it this way? You know, because when I asked him inside if I could take pictures of the visitor center and the buildings that were up front, he said I could. Um, and uh, and I tried to actually. I was like, 85 bucks. Man. I, I just I couldn't get over th that theme. Maybe it was because it was Christmas. I don't know. But there were carloads of people going in there. You know, and I'm thinking, geez, 85 bucks a head, four people a car. You know, <laughs> you're looking at almost 400 bucks a car. It was crazy, you know, and they were lining up. Um, but anyway, so I said, hey, you know, I just want to take pictures of the outside. I don't want to go inside. I don't need to see the inside of this place. How about 15 bucks? And he was like, nope, 85. But he said I could take pictures of everything else, you know, the, uh, the gift shop and that front little tower thing that you have to drive through. And this was worth it alone. This is worth my free <laughs> tour of Billmore. Um, just look at that. You know, and I wanted to comment about the trees, too. You know, they're very near, and, and I hadn't really paid much attention to this aspect of it. Uh, it came up in the one that I did about, you know, um, my troll, Trolly. Uh, he just, I saw he just posted a video, so I'm going to have to try to get to that, uh, see what he's still going on about. But these trees look very young, right? They do. You know, I never really kind of paid attention to that. Um, this is the other side of it, and again, it just goes right down the back of this building. Like, they were too lazy to dig it all out, you know, and they felt they didn't need to. Um, so I couldn't believe that. All right, so then we're just, I, I, I wasn't going to let it get me down. There was, I knew there was going to be stuff in Asheville, and I, I, I looked up Asheville on the way down, the Wikipedia. Oh, I, I didn't bring it up for this. Oh, and let me set a timer. Let me get a timer going. Um, but I looked up Asheville real quick. It gave me the elevation, which I don't remember, but we're up high in the mountains. And, um, it told me it was incorporated in the 1790s. And I was like, yep, there's going to be mud flood all over the place. And I was really interested because it is so high and in the mountains. And whenever I come across high ground in Baltimore and I see evidence of the mud flood, it just always boggles my mind. How did the architect, how did the people who were building this house... You know, how does it make sense, you know, when you're on high ground to have, you know, doorways that are dug out three to four feet below the sidewalk level with a narrow path of like 18 to 24 inches? It just, you know, I think if you knew you were on high ground, you would do better. You know? So when we were driving into Asheville, this is one of the first buildings that I noticed this church. And I took a lot of pictures of churches, a lot of old churches in Asheville. All right, so I'm going to try to fly through this as quick as I can. But again, just look at this, you know, level line here. And you can see the pitch, you know, classic, right? Telltale sign, you know, and here it is going down the side. And you can see it. And you can kind of see that magnetic pattern in these bricks, too. And I had a comment. Um, there was a comment in one of my videos where I talk about this. And the guy believes it's you know, from translating, you know, it's a digital translation of this image, you know, and that's kind of what I thought originally, but it still does, you know, when I see churches, especially bricked over like this, or when I see this magnetic, I, I can't help but think that there's some sort of purpose, that like these bricks, you know, harness some form of magnetic resonance, and, you know, I, I don't know. So, ooh, do, do I, can you see this from this side here? So, just to give a detail, they have a little peeper window down here well below you know it's interesting that they submitted this off and then did brickwork the rest of the way again making me think that perhaps there's something older underneath this brick um so yeah i got a little close-up of that i went further down and give you an idea see this, this and this has a kind of a steepish drop i mean you see it just goes down right uh and that's the thing. Everything is on hill. And this is another angle from the side. And I just kind of want to show this is very common in, in what we're going to see in the brief. I had two hours total to do this, you know. Uh, so I, I, because the Biltmore crapped out on us, <laughs> I got um, spent a little more time in the city. So I never really even looked at this mural before. But that's kind of cool. She's projecting mentally some music, maybe CDs. Um, 
Definitely interesting concrete marble kind of pattern CD. I'm guessing that's what digital music, you know, interesting that it's connected to this old kind of church. But everything, and the other side of this, there's like a narrow gap. It's uh, uh, moated a little bit on the other side of this wall. And we're going to see plenty of that as well. But I just wanted to show they just lop this off to create a parking lot. You know, and dug this area out and left that church, you know, and bouncing around the street as I do, you know, fat man style, just bing, 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 you know, here's this building that was like across the street. Look at that slope. All right. Um, this I wanted to show because around the door kind of shows how my theory about doors being just blown out windows. Look at the way they, this doesn't match the rest, right? You know, um, so that window, that door was created there. Here's one side, the front side. This would be the front entrance, which is gated off. But look at this slope, right? And the, how little this window is over here. And then how they saved it here. I like the check pattern, or this, you know, diamond pattern on the brick, you know. That's fairly unusual. I don't see that very often. Um, you know, and again, on the tops, it has, you know, these little ballish antenna type things, you know. Um, so again, just right away, telltale sign, this is the other side of that building, which is they painted a mural on, you know. Um, I'm going to try to get through this quick here. Again, just turning around, bang, there's another old looking church. And I look at this one with the stonework and I think, God, this is the top of a much bigger building, <laughs> you know. Um, again, the, the slope, you know, it's kind of, it's very steepish in Asheville, all these slopes and hills. It's very, very hilly. Uh, and it's hard to tell. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to do Asheville. Um, because of how much of it is using the term, you know, using the natural landscape of these, these mountainscapes and how much of this could be attributed to some form of mud event, right? And, I, you know, these windows go right up to the grass level. And, you know, here's looking down, here's looking up that hill. Um, and you can see, this may be that other, again, sometimes the photos get a little out of order. And so then that was that little pit stop there. My wife is such a great sport. So she, you know, she like, and she loves going into Asheville. There's her favorite bookstore is a place called Malaprops. And so she was happy to sit in there and drink tea and knit and, um, while I bounced around Asheville for a little while. And so the first, you know, we leave that area, we're driving down the road and I see this and I'm like, yep. And we make a stop. And so this is the Basilica. I did bring up, um, Google Earth on Asheville to start at this Basilica. We'll see if I feel I really need to do it. Um, so this is the side of the building. And they have a parking lot there. And you can, again, look at the level line that they kind of create. Um, and this is looking down that. Right? It's steep. This 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 was no joke, right? And as for the one thing maybe I wanted to showcase with the uh, Google Earth on the Basilica. Here's the Basilica here. This is what I'm taking pictures of. So we parked here and I'm roaming around this side of it right here. It's really hard to get from like this up top, top angle. The pitches of these hills. This is steep stuff here. This goes right down. You know, um, you know, so this is that sort of side building that's connected to the main cathedral here, right? And again, just looking at it, it has the, the this a classic tar Tartarian, you know, for. I mean, that's the name we're using, I guess, right? Um, you know, that hell-like, <laughs> that hellish architecture of the Greeks and these uh, domes, which are cast iron or copper. I mean, they definitely have patinaed out, you know, and the big dome in the back that you get to see from the top. All right, here's this oval dome, you know, big... Uh, I did, when I first looked at it, and I did look up the art, there's an architect for this, and they say, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't bring all that up, because I, it's going to be a long slideshow, and, and there'll be opportunities to get into some of this stuff later when I, you know, and 
Okay, and Mud Flood in his video does a great job of bringing down that architect for the Biltmore estate, you know, and that's pretty much what I was saying in some of my earlier earlier videos is that, you know, they they educate a bunch of guys, you know, in art and draftsmanship and you know, and they have them draw out these buildings, you know, and put them in volumes and sell them and you know, my number three presentation that keeps failing, I go into, I do a lot with this architect Palladio, who's responsible for that Palladian style architecture that was in um, on Mount Clare and so many buildings. And I've become obsessed. Look, here's, I'm looking at this tower here and it has three on each side. The number three is, uh, it's killing me that I couldn't get that presentation together earlier. I will though. I will not let it beat me. <laughs> uh, so here's the front of it. And I just wanted to show all the little tower aspects they have. And, and some of these things you could tell are a little more recent than others. You know, they do have like the clergy and the, and the typical Catholic clergy robes. I don't know the meaning of the frond here that he's carrying uh, or what's in his hand there. But there's, you know, maybe this isn't the best picture to blow up. But there's people on top and it has these round bowls but I wanted what I wanted to really showcase was in the towers themselves um, they're owls and I think these are more modern I think this might have been added in I, did I say the year I forgot if I mentioned it or not I think it was the early 1900s like 1905 you know which tends to be on the later aspect of that gilded age it's right before they you know call it a day on that but there's owls in both of these towers um, so again, you know, and just based on the hill the way it is, uh, and again, this is a nice deep slope, and so I go all around it, and I crawl in these bushes, <laughs> and I do, there's something I've been meaning, to, I've been wanting to say, and I'm going to get to say it <laughs> in a second here once I get up close, but again, you could just, just going down the hill, you know, and these cameras do such a poor job of, of you know, it seems close, it's big, this is a big, structure all right so I get up close to that you know here's here it is from the bottom and now I'm gonna get to it this my major enemy the Sun ah uh, the Sun was angry that day <laughs> and it was in my face everywhere I went sorry to keep that on you um, yes the Sun was so angry but I did I got I got up behind the bushes I wanted to show that the windows go right up level with the with the ground which was a giant hill you know um, very hilly, and now I'm up and behind, and they had stairs going up and around. Let's see if I can showcase that a little bit on the All right. So, yeah, I was taking that picture from down here, and now I'm around the other side, and this is that stairway going up to the back. And back here, you know, they have some interesting features there's it, it tunnels out to connect these two buildings and it and it goes up to the to the top right so there's a tunnel and it and it's steep you know that goes from the the street level here down between these two buildings all right clear indication to me the way that was tunneled out that it was dug out and not designed that way and let's see how uh this is a side view uh, from the bottom of that little side building. Rector, are those called rectories? I don't even know. Looking up at the dome, you know, the, the satellite dome up front um, from the back side. And now I'm up in that, you know, sort of overhang. And you see the construction here, the stonework construction. And they altered it to for these windows and to put this air conditioner in there. But they have this, I thought this was interesting. Uh, do I have a better picture of that? Yeah. You know, it's almost like half a door, right? And the way they bricked it off. And so that's an overhang that I'm under. And there's these two levels of step separated by, you know, not a small, short distance, you know, a few yards anyway, of, um, to connect the, the lower level parking lot to the top of the street, which I guess is Hayward Street, you know, showing this a little bit. You know, and now we're leaving. Goodbye, Basilica. You were good to me. And you're definitely covered in mud. <laughs> and then, so moving on, my wife is now safely ensconced in her bookstore, drinking her tea. <laughs> and I'm on the prowl. And this is that corner, right, at the bookstore, Malaprops on Hayward Street. 
And this is what I tried to do with the Google Earth, but I couldn't really find my way around so well. Look at that drop off, right? And this is the other side. Malaprops is just on the other side of this, is in this brick building here, right? And, you know, and I see all the similar stylings that I see in Baltimore, you know? I mean, all of these cities have the same look and feel to them. And this is in the North Carolina, in the mountains, you know, the Smoky Mountains or the Blue Ridge Mountains. I mean, it has the same industrial leg, and this truck was in the way, and I noticed this here. And it's a tunnel underneath this building. All right, to go back a couple, let's see if... You know, so it connects to the next building, which I don't think I got a good picture of, but we'll, we're going to go on, uh, right? And there's the connects the two buildings, one side and then the other, right? Again, to me, and this is recovered. <laughs> it wasn't designed that way. Maybe, I mean, who's to say it was or wasn't, but I mean, just my impression of it being there and looking at this stuff. And again, just continuing down that hill. I mean, I'm sure I got a picture of looking up the hill. Yeah, you know, look at that. I mean, I, I mean, if you're utilizing this, if you're on, if you're construct, I, like I think if you're an architect or you're in construction and you're building these buildings and you're trying to utilize the landscape, the best of your ability is this the best of your ability by having these cut off windows designed this way and windows that disappear into sidewalks? It doesn't. That doesn't ring true to me. You know, whenever I see it, if if. You want to use make the argument that it's designed that way. You know, if you want to make the argument that it's designed that way, then you have to think that designers take into consideration. This is looking up that hill. All right, now there's that. I think that's that truck. No, maybe this is a different hill. Maybe I'm not down that hill all the way yet. Because wherever you look, it's hills in Asheville. Wherever you are, you're on the bottom of a hill. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um... Yeah, so again, just trying to demonstrate how hilly this terrain is, and here, you know, look at that, The you know, are you trying to tell me that this building isn't built down to meet this? You know, I, of course it is. Looking around for features that I would consider, you know, that lost civilization, that previous civilization, I see this, this wide thing here. I mean, they painted it to, you know, reflect, and it certainly has a reflection of that. Uh, Tartarian architecture, but I just at one point this was all open, right? Yeah, you know, that's the way I look at that. And, and what did they store in there? <laughs> you know, that they had to have such a wide open space. And so, again, just doing my you know, my be bopping around Asheville, I come across this structure right here's a there was a building and this walkway, this brick wall down into a parking lot, all right? And so, I'm gonna follow this around for us a little bit. You know, here's the bottom. You know, and again, these, I just, th these buildings go down to this level, at least, I have to believe, right? And they just carved this area out. Who knows, maybe there was another building here that they leveled at one time. I mean, that's probably more likely, as I think that through a little bit. Ah, the angry sun again. Um, I didn't really edit much of this. I, you're pretty much getting every picture I took. I did try to edit some of them. Um... I want to show kind of has an archway as well. You know, so again, maybe there was a building here at some point. And I'm going to go up these stairs, of course, because there's no no stairway is safe for me if they're not gated off. That's the surest way to keep me out is to fence it in. <laughs> um, so I wanted to show this was a cul-de-sac behind that building, right? And all of these buildings, dugout doors... You know, doors that are above, you know, really old looking masonry back here. Yeah, and again, it cul de sacs. Yeah, and there's all kinds of new construction over old construction. You can see the, you know, some of the layers, um, the layers to it. Um, do doors below doors, you know, to me, again, telltale sign. This is dug out, and they modified what was there to make use of it, you know, because they weren't digging any further. <laughs> that was an interesting. Wait a minute. Let me go back to that. That was an interesting bit of cover up there, you know. Um, so, again, very interesting telltale signs, recovery, recovery everywhere. I saw signs of recovery high in the mountains. How do you explain the signs of recovery. If you're building stuff high in the mountains, you're on high ground. And again, some of this could be explained. Again, I'm over eager with my imagination. Some of it 
perhaps they were utilizing the terrain as best they can. But man, the way some of these buildings disappear into slopes, it just doesn't look right if you're utilizing the terrain. I, I don't know. So I saw this building. This is one of the taller buildings in, in Asheville. At least one of the taller ones that look of uh, an antique sort of nature, you know. And it's got, you know, the turrets, these antenna here, whatever they are you want to call them. Right up on top to a bunch of them. And this building next to it, again, built flush, has that sort of look about it with the arches and this filament above the top. And I have ideas about this because I see it in all the row homes and in many, many of the major buildings. There's got to be a reason for it, you know. Uh, it almost looks like track to me or, you know, some sort of connecting, you know. I don't know how to describe what I want to say there. Um, almost like, you know, almost like a cartridge, like the old school video games, where you plug it into something, like something might plug into there, or something ran, ran along these treads. They're everywhere, you know, and they're on all the row homes here in Baltimore. And here's the front of that bill. Here's the very entrance, right? And again, it just kind of disappears into the, it's a slope. You're going down a hill to get here, and look at that, you know what that is, don't you? You know what I like to do. Although I didn't walk down that one. Um, it leads to a cafe. Like there's a coffee shop down there or something. Um, this is it from the other side of the street. That's the stairway down. And there's, again, it's a hill. And look at the way these windows are going. Maybe, you know, a designer might design it this way if they knew this, this picture of the hill. But to continue to walk down the hill. I mean, I look at this and this. Not quite level the way, I don't know. And this also, they have a connecting, they connect these two buildings and whether they are connected originally or not, I don't know, I tend to think they were. You know, with this arch, the way it's kind of filled in this way, you know, I think these buildings may have been originally connected uh, and that's not new. Um, so I walked through there, of course, you know, <laughs> if it's open, I'm walking in it. <laughs> and then, so you leave, I saw this building kind of has this old look to it. Everything's fresh. You know, a lot of these buildings are freshly painted, you know, um, continuing on. Oh, that's, is that, so that building must've been across the street. This is that stairway, the underground cafe. And I'm going to move on to some more churches. I found, oh no, but before I did that, before I came across the churches, I came across this nice rounded building with these arches. And I looked at this, you know, filigree or whatever. I don't know what this is really called here on the sides. Um, you know, but it's really ornate. Where is my cursor? There it is. You know, we have this guy here. You know, and we have like a mer lizard, half liz mer person, sna half snake, half person, you know, tying into the dragon motif that I got going on, right? You know, uh, the dragon of the sea, you know, I'm sure. What do we got? And this one's got wings. Um, you know, so I thought that's very interesting, you know, and I follow this around as best I can. You know, again, it's tough to get right up under them and take effective pictures with cameras the way that they are today, or make camera phones the way they are today. Uh, this is that same guy. Did I get anything different on this side? Um, again, I just thought this building, the, the, this motif they had going around it was really kind of interesting. You know, who knows what all of it means, but it's very similar to the stuff that's on the police station. You know, the faces that were on the, the police station that I had in my video, um, in my earlier video. All right, here's a lion crest of some sort. Weather down, again, I want, I got a, I believe if we were to look this building up, it would tell us it was built in between 1880 and 1910 and that 30 year span, but look how weathered that looks, you know? I mean, man, we got more, more lions over here. Let's see what else. I could swear I took a better one. And this just continues the street. Uh, it continues along. I think it might have been a bank building. Yes, bank. And again, look how big that would have been if they didn't fill this in with glass. That would have been a huge opening, 
you know, because again, I don't think that, that this was originally intended to be filled in with glass in a doorway. This was wide open at one point. Yeah, um, let's see how much of this I continue along with. Right here, they're building something on an anvil, right? The anvil that fell down to Tartaria, right? What, right? You know, and this kind of looks, and I, and I show here's your masonry, um, you know, and the gears and everything. So this bit of it, you know, maybe from a later period, um, celebrating what these people believe they found and uncovered, um, you know, again, I wish I was better at interpreting this kind of stuff. Um, and I, you know, and I will look into it more as, as we go along again, there's going to be so many avenues. There was one with a, right, here's that anvil again. Where was, I did look at one that had yeah, you know, just again, cool building, you know, and I look at these structures up top and they, they form and function, you know, these could be replacement of, you know, the really patinaed copper or iron. Where, yeah, here's this guy. This is what I want. This guy's blowing a horn, right? Again, more of that sonic, you know, frequency kind of connection there. Let's keep this thing moving. And again, I just want to point out all this ornate filigree and there's and how how you know how similar it is to what's here in Baltimore, you know. And they say, you know, again, um, Asheville established, I believe, 1795. If my memory serves me. And so turning around, like from that building, again, just my you know ping ponging across the streets of Asheville, in my you know, and again, I had a short window to work with, about two hours total. Um, and there were a couple places I wanted to hit just personally to do some shopping and stuff too, for Christmas Eve. And, um, you know, so I was running along these streets and I came across this church. This is, I believe the Methodist church and it's a huge church complex and it's multi-level. And, um, again, perhaps they were utilizing the terrain, the hilltop that they were on. Cause again, wherever you are in Asheville, you're at the bottom of a hill. And you got to get a sense of the ink, the, of the um, decline here. Um, and again, just great old brickwork, work, you know, old, old stonework rather, you know, in the church. There's a, of course, there's a church right across the street from this one that's bricked up. You know, again, I think they just decided to brick one. You know, you have your, your metal tipped towers here. They're everywhere. This pattern of three, this a Venetian style, which is what started my whole thing about the number three <laughs> maybe i'll do that one tomorrow just sit down and go with it um you know again you find a doorway that had to be dug out you know there's a few steps i go up to it you know i had to go down these steps you know it's 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 uh clearly dug out here you know to create that step down uh this is a is that bricked up church across the street you know um, and I like this one has the talons, like the dragon's talons is how I'm going to be referring to when I see that in church windows going forward, because I do, I did spend a little bit of time, like I said in the last video, getting deeper into the whole worm night aspect of it and the, and the dragon and, you know, so it's going to be fun, uh, getting that deep. And again, you had to go down another, you know, a couple of steps, four or five steps easy to get to this set of doors. And it just keeps going down, right? And it, here's the level for this next one. And this may be a more recent addition. I don't know. You know, here, because here I am at the bottom looking up, right? So here's those doors. You know, you look here. This is an alley that I, of course, go right up in. <laughs> it leads to this door behind there. And this is the abutment to the other church, you know, the other church is here, right? So you know that the, the, the you know, well, maybe there's a gap here. Maybe the church doesn't quite go here, but I have to believe that, you know, that's where the church goes down to the, at least this level, right? Um, and that's the impression I got of it as I was roaming around. Um, and there's looking up at it. I don't know why I had those pictures. Again, here you get a sort of sense of, how brutal to say, the sun was angry that day, my friends. 
<laughs> I just cracked myself up all day talking about that. The sun was, you know. Um, again, you can see, I don't know, this, this little corner had three churches on it. It was a massive church complex, and they all had signs of being buried, you know, and being recovered properties. And, and again, since one one church was stonework. I think they bricked up the other ones to make it look like they had differing styles and that they really weren't old buildings. I saw this building across the street, and I, this is what I wanted to point out here. And again, this is something. This crown, this crest, that looks like the Tudor rose to me. All right, the Tudor dynasty, as we... And again, I'm not an expert on and, and you know, I did everything so loosely, but if I'm not mistaken, that was the 1500s, right? So why? Why would this building have a crest w with a crown and the Tudor rose on it if it, if Asheville was founded in 1795, right? Which was not, which was the ha house Hanover, right? Hanover was the ruling house of England at that time, right? Maybe, again, because I haven't looked into Hanover that much yet, we're, you know, because I'm still not done with Baltimore and the Revolutionary War and what happened there and the industry that's about to explode out of Baltimore that they squashed in order to hide the truth. Um, that's, you know, kind of a, where I'm going to go. Uh, and I look at this doorway here and how big this structure was and how they modified it to make a door and the pitch of this hill, this building. This building's really interesting to me. I think it's definitely something older. Now I'm back to the churches. Because, that, again, that building was just across the street. I'm, you know, ricochet rabbiting around, taking a bunch of pictures. More ta more dragons' talons coming down. You know, they split the, this tripara window into six. Um, and another building that's across the street. Maybe that might be one side of the other. But there's definitely evidence that architecture is present everywhere in Asheville. These buildings look deeply covered in mud. Here's the backside of that church. You know, and look, they had to build this zigzag, you know, to create this doorway, you know, when they dug all this out. There's my timer. So, okay, this is not going to be as over long as I thought because I know I'm winding down. Quiet, you. I can't believe how late in the day it is already. There's looking uphill at it. From the side oh this is the one that has that um look at that right i mean there's this door carved out in there you know there's no way that this was architecturally designed to be a door there right you know they made they this door was an afterthought i have to believe right and now this is that ch the methodist church again you can see it from this angle right this is where the windows kind of go beneath and this is when I went down into the alley and turned down to that door that's where I had to go and again a big big complex three main buildings leveled up or leveled down around just the building and the street is a hill all right totally 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 seems like recovered property and again just the way they had to uncover to get to the these doorways back here See, now I'm feeling rushed because my timer went off and I think I have a few more pictures uh, to demonstrate how much this is, you know, how blatantly recovered it looks to my untrained eye. <laughs> yeah, sure, years of architectural school and design and building, right? Nope, covered in mud and dug out. And this I thought was interesting. This was on a building next door. I loved this. I don't know how they this was done, whether there was a church that they built this next to that was standing here and this was all filled in and painted over like there might have there I think there was a level of this church that was knocked down that they built this brick structure next to right and when they knocked the church down this is what was left right and because there's nothing on the other side right just this building I I, don't know, I just I love that you know and again I have no idea really what was there but that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking this brick building was built flush against this church and when they knocked the church down, this is what was left, you know, just again, showcasing how many church buildings can be close together. See, here's the church building to my left here would have been that, you know, uh, negative image of the church. <laughs> yeah, that's my left. And then this is looking down the hill. 
you know, and going along this church, again, had to go down that hill. It's mowed it out, right? Mowed it out. I, of course, I go down all up in it. <laughs> you know, I definitely, look, look how deep. This is the hill I just walked down up here. To the left would have been that ghost image, right? Walk down the hill. You know, mowed it out. Dug out. Right? They have an iron gate you can't even get back there, but I stuck my arm in there because that's what I do. All right, and so this is that hill. There's the ghost image. You can see how much of this, you know, the top, you know, where the, is up here, right? So the top of this church from the street level would be somewhere along here, this level here. All right, and they created this door. Let's look. This, doesn't this look to you like it could, can just continue down? And who knows what they grew behind these bushes as they use the landscaping terrain a lot. This because the sun was my enemy. I couldn't, I thought I took more pictures of it, but they just bricked over that great circular window that these portal windows that all these buildings have. This is the bottom. Again, just who knows what building was here, but I'm guessing this was the imprint of another building. They just tore out and, you know, that's sort of a new observation just looking at these pictures. Because again, with my with with the RP and you know and being there, it's it's very different for me. You know, I, I get a lot more of the detail from these smaller pictures, which is a, you know a benefit. You know, looking up again, you know, and there's the tower for that Methodist church with the pattern of three. Everything's three, and now I'm going in, and this is what I wanted to demonstrate. I found new construction in this the town where my mother lives. You know, my my and my stepfather, my, my parents. Um, I, and so I wanted to showcase, you know, this is what people do. What's happening? Nope. Thank you for not finding viruses on my PC. Um, this is how they do it now, right? They, this is a big steep hill and, you know, so they wall it off and I'm going to, you know, I'm down at the bottom of the hill that I'm about to climb up. Right. And the side angles, now I'm getting up higher. And this is the basement. This is the foundation level. You know what I don't see any of? And I didn't see any of anywhere? Little peeping windows. They're little peepers. Nowhere in new construction. You know, at least not this new construction, you know. Uh, and they utilize this hillside brilliantly, as I'm going to keep going, right? They stagger it up to create the next level. And on that level of houses, all right, this is, this is the um, moated out. But they level the, the moat with these windows here. And I would imagine I didn't go crawl. This is all fenced off pretty well. My, this is me sticking my camera through my phone through the fence. Um, you know, so they do utilize some of the same technique, but they keep the windows above the level, right? At least in this example. <clears throat> and is looking down, right? And this I thought was interesting. This like signpost was here. It's all rusty and old looking. And, you know, this was Christmas Day. I was just taking a walk because I, I, you know, it's my daily exercise. I like to walk. And uh, my stepfather told me about this construction going on up here. So I wanted to take a look at it. And so I, you know, and again, they dug all of it out. They level it all off. There's no little below window below basement ground windows. And then con continuing up that road, there was already development and there was like a senior center or something down there. And so I wanted to take a picture of this to show how either they've taken something old and made it look very new or they built new construction to mimic what they've recovered, you know, to just, you know, to show that things are always kind of like this. Yeah, we built like this now. They built, you know, that's, you know, not old, you know construction and here's a sort of glance at this condominium complex and I think that's that's pretty much it I just wanted to show oh and then I found this construction right even earlier uh in its stages right and they look how they dug it all out and and the the, the foundations come level to the ground and there's no little peeper windows you know which makes me think of more modern houses that I see peeper windows in and I go did they design it do certain houses get designed this way because they're copying these older architects who had to copy, and, you know, and just draw the, the designs from buildings that already had the peeper windows. So when they were teaching art, 
you know, architecture to, to people post 1880 or whatever. They taught the people a window needed to be built because that's, they were there. <laughs> and again, this is moded out. I couldn't get close to this one. It was kind of far. I mean, I could have, I but kind of was in a rush and uh, I didn't want to crawl around this property all day. Um, but again, just to give you an idea as to what the modern techniques are like, you know, um, compared to what we see and these buildings that they, you know, want to say were built in the uh, 1800s, but have weird windows coming out of the ground and weird doorways. See, when you're building into hillsides, you don't build it for weird doorways, you know, unless there's some other form or function around it. Okay, so that's it. Anyway, so that's my that's my road trip. That's my Mud City road trip to Asheville. Um, please check out the Mud Flood video on the Biltmore Estate. It's amazing. He does a great job, much better than I ever would have done. I hope you had fun taking this tour of Asheville with me. I had a lot of fun presenting it, presenting it to you guys. Okay. So, uh, of course, I uh, got carried away with my slideshow there, and I forgot to mention what it is I wanted to talk about with the Vanderbilt family. And so I'm going to try to do this as fast as I possibly can to keep the runtime down on this video to 50-ish minutes. Okay, so Mud Flood in his video did talk a little bit about the Vanderbilts, but he kind of didn't go very deep, and he didn't, you know, and he kind of started, I believe, with Cornelius. Um, and so when I was first investigating my presentation that I w wanted to do, um, yeah, I, I went back a little bit deeper, and so I want to show you just quickly how I could make this come back to Baltimore. <laughs> um... But anyway, so I, one thing I wanted to mention about the Vanderbilts, and they kind of have this reputation as being like a rags to riches sort of story, right? New money kind of thing, right? Uh, it says they gained their prominence during the Gilded Age, which is 1870 to 1900, right? You know, uh, 1870s to 1900, right? You know, when all these mansions and all this sort of all these buildings that we're looking at as recovered properties, you know, and all these me mega mansions and things like this were popping up, you know, that's when they sort of were coming into their own, allegedly, right? allegedly. Um, right, and so they were, um, they say that Vanderbilt was the richest American at his death in 1877. I wonder when he, when the Vanderbilts took that title over from the Carrolls. And it's interesting, I, I did see a list of uh, richest Americans, in, um, and the Carols weren't on it, which I thought was very, very interesting. Um, so, let's see. Let's get into the history a little bit, because like I said, I wanted to bring it back a bit further. All right, so the first one, like the first Vanderbilt, is this Jan Ertsen, or Ertsen. All right, he was a Dutch farmer from the village of De Bilt in Utrecht. Utrecht. Netherlands, right, uh, who emigrated to the Dutch colony of N New Netherland as an indentured servant to the Van Kuenhoven family in 1650. Um, so this is what the history is telling us. And, and, you know, we know all know what indentured servitude is. It's a contract, you know, so you work off your debt to whomever paid your way over, you know, um, and so he took the name Vanderbilt from the Dutch, right, uh, from the, the van, right, and the DeBilt. And he created, uh, he became John Vanderbilt, the first Vanderbilt, right. Um, and then Mud Flood in his video goes into Cornelius Vanderbilt, and they got money from the railroad. And you know the railroad is a little bit close to my heart in this research, Um but I, I wanted to find out, okay, so this is as far as back as we can trace a Vanderbilt, because he would be the very first one. Who's this other guy? Who's who's Van Coenhoven? <laughs> and I like his seal has a beaver on it, which is really interesting to me. And I don't know how deep I'll ever get with this guy. This could be the only time I ever come across him, but I'm tending not to think so. Um, you know, so Wolfert here, he was... Um, he was a founder of the New Netherland Colony, right? He was uh, founded the first European settlement on Long Island called New Amsterfort and was a chefin of New Amsterdam, which is like a councilman or something, like a mayor maybe. Um, 
You know, and he played a role in laying the foundations of the communities of Manhattan, Albany, Rensselaer Engineering School up there. I mean, I'm going to have to look at some of those buildings. <laughs> and Brooklyn. Um, so, you know, he was a play clearly a player for the, the, the Dutch East India Company. And the thing I wanted to mention about that was that the Dutch East India Company and the British East India Company are like one in the same. They are, they're, they're tied at the hip, you know what I'm saying? Um, the Netherlands may have started their Dutch East India Company a little bit earlier after this 30 years war. Um, and again, there's, I, I, since I have to do this after the fact, I had other stuff brought up about the 30 years war. So, you know, I'm going to be bringing, I'm going to be touching all, on a lot of this in season two, whenever I get that officially going, um, because I'm going to bring the bloodlines back. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to trace this, this worm night bloodline and the red and the white. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get in a little deep, a little deeper than I ever intended. Um, because I followed the history of the names of Charles and Carol, and it brought me to interesting places. And um, so I wanted to look into who's this guy who is the patron of the first Vanderbilt, right? And they talk a little bit about his farm that's on Long Island. Uh, so here for the Dutch West India Company, uh, and again, the East one is the one from England, uh, Wolfert ran a banking and clothes bleaching business. When in 1625, he was assigned as one of the first settlers to cultivate farms in the New Netherlands colony by the Dutch West India. I say, so now I'm thinking, if I'm the Dutch West India Company, am I, and I'm cultivating farms, am I getting a bank, a baker and a clothes bleacher to look things over for me? There's got to be something more to this, right? And as an indentured servant, he brings over this farmer, this Jan, uh... Uh, Ertzen, you know, who becomes the first Vanderbilt. So, you know, maybe Jan steps in a little bit, you know, gets it on his shoe and turns this information, his job here with Wolfie, with Wol Wolfert, you know. Um, and so, again, I just, you know, when you're looking at these years, you're looking at the players involved, the, 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 these in, the India trading companies, I told you, I, I know I mentioned at one point in my earliest videos that the Dutch do play a big factor. And, you know, I tie all of this royal bloodline stuff. I try to do my best, you know, I, or I try to do my best with a little bit of rabbit holing one day. And I, and I do believe I have enough to make some good presentations out of it. And so that's where it's going to go. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, just so there is no new money, right? I mean, maybe he wasn't all that rich but he came in on top he came in with the top people right into new york new amsterdam right at the time uh as a indentured servant whatever that may have meant um because i think there's more involved you know he may have there, you know and there wasn't much i could find by googling jan ertzen and jan ertzun i couldn't find much you know uh so it's interesting that he comes over with this big wig who's you know, one of the first guys the Dutch West India Company wants to uh, have on the ground in New York. Um, and so that's it. You know, I, like I said, I just, there are ways to, oh, and this is, I wanted to bring in, like, see, I didn't realize they still have, like, kings and queens and stuff over there. But I wanted to illustrate that, you know, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, you know, was was governed by the House of Orange Nassau. And the, uh, and the House Nassau from 1559 to 1747, uh, when Prince Philip, where King Philip of Spain appointed William of Orange as stat holder, right? And so Prince Philip is part of the Habsburgs, Spain. They get into all of this stuff about the wars, the Thirty Years' War, and all. They want us to buy in to all of this conflict that's in the, this early historical record. And that's what I get most of it, that, you know. It's really the same families just, you know, establishing their uh, industrial centers around the recovery of these, these ancient pro um, properties, you know, through their charter company contracts to the crown. And what is the crown? The crown is, you know, is octopus type organization with all these families across Europe. At least that's kind of what I'm getting from this research. So anyway, that's it. I wanted to touch on them briefly 
through the, you know, because of the uh, Biltmore estate and, you know, and I do, you know, Mud Flood and his video does do a little bit, but I wanted to take it a little bit deeper to show how connected all of this stuff could be. So that's where I'm going to wrap it up. You know, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I had a good time making it for everyone. Um, you know, so please take care. Uh, and until the next one, cheers.